Hello, welcome to the Daily Devotion. I'm Kathy Morris, pastor of the Dixon United Methodist Church. Our Bible reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 28, through chapter 9, verse 1. And I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. When Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake, in the country of the Gadarenes, two men who were demon-possessed came from among the tombs to meet him. They were so violent that nobody could travel on that road. They cried out, What are you going to do with us, Son of God? Have you come to torture us before the time of judgment? Far off in the distance, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons pleaded with him, If you throw us out, send us into that herd of pigs. Then he said to the demons, Go away. And they came out and went into the pigs. The whole herd rushed down the cliff into the lake and drowned. Those who tended the pigs ran into the city and told everything that had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole city came out and met Jesus. When they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Boarding a boat, Jesus crossed to the other side of the lake and went to his own city. In a summary description of this passage, it says this, Jesus <clears throat> overcomes demonic forces. That could almost be a newspaper headline. Jesus revealed the powerful presence of God's kingdom as he engaged in his ministry of healing. His healings often included those who were possessed by demonic spirits. Demons oppressed people in a variety of ways. They were tortured from within, but also it brought about social marginalization and isolation. The two men, possessed by demons, lived amongst the tombs. They lived among the dead. Jesus had the power to command the demons to come out to come out of the men and to go into the pigs and then the pigs into the sea. We would love to have such power over demons. There are so many demons around, demons that we would love to be rid of, both in ourselves and in those we love. The demons of fear, anxiety, depression, addiction, demons of indifference, injustice, violence, and hatred. Demons that divide us and cause us to separate into camps. We try to live according to God's power, but often these demons refuse to let go of their hold so that we then feel powerless. While we may feel powerless over the demons that possess us, we feel even more powerless about the demons that possess those we love. It can even be difficult for us to know what we should be praying for. Do we pray for a cure for the illness? Do we pray that they will find enough stability to hold down a job or to make friends? Very often when we think about prayer, we think about asking for a specific outcome. Prayers that we offer for others are called prayers of intercession. Rowan Williams, a former Archbishop of Canterbury, defines intercession as thinking of something or someone in the presence of God. Intercessory prayer seeks to keep God and people together, to keep God and the world together. Being in God's presence frees us from all that harms us and heals us such that we are able to live in true freedom. It was being in Jesus' presence 
that healed the men who were oppressed by demons. Jesus brought the powerful presence of God into the world and into the hearts and lives of people. It is God who knows what our true need is. It is God who knows how best to meet that need. The best thing that we can do in our prayers is to bring people, the people we love, together with God. Now, a way for us to visualize that prayer is to use our hands. One hand can represent the, the person or the situation in the world that we want to pray for. The other hand represents God. And so as we bring our hands together, we are bringing that person, that situation, together with God. And as we sit holding our hands together, this is indeed a way for us to be in prayer for others. So let us offer our prayers, trusting in God's mercy always.